Hudson Valley Wine Village, I'd like to thank you uh, for joining us today. I'm Josh Summers, one of the project consultants. It's not every day that we can give a project update and briefing session on a project that, that's going to make a, a benefit of over $270 million to the community. It's a, it's a huge investment. And today we're giving a briefing session on an update, where it is in the process, and to provide greater detail about the project. just want to introduce a few uh, of our electeds here uh, standing behind us. Uh, from uh, Lloyd Supervisor Paul Hansett. Also uh, behind us is Jeff Palladino. And if I forget anyone, shoot me, not Andy, uh, from the project, of course. Also, I want to acknowledge Dave Barton, the building department director. Uh, we have some other uh, key officials here from uh, the director of office and business services in Ulster County, Suzanne Holt. Uh, Larry Gottlieb, President and CEO of Hudson Valley Economic Development Corporation. We have Ward Todd, the President of the Ulster County Regional Chamber of Commerce uh, here. Thank you for joining us, uh, Ward. Uh, uh, Dwayne uh, Pusupak, did I say that right? Pretty, pretty close? Okay. It's Andy's fault. Uh, from Ulster County Field Representative for Congressman Chris Gibson, thank you for joining us here today. And did I miss any electeds that uh, are here? Okay, I get a... I, uh, Suzanne Holt, I mentioned. So, okay, so I got an A minus on that so far. We'd like to introduce our project team at Hudson Valley Wine Village. Andrew Maxson, who is the project leader for Hudson Valley Wine Village, he'll be uh, taking the podium in a moment. Uh, Stephen Tinkleman of Tinkleman Architecture. Also, Ken Stanger of Stanger, Roberts, Davis, and Diamond. And uh, we want to also acknowledge Chasen Companies. Uh, I believe uh, one of their representatives, Mark Castor or Stuart Messenger, might be here shortly. And this is our team. We're going to provide a lot of detail today. And uh, thank you all for being here. We'll be available for a Q&A after the formal presentation. I'd like to kick it off to Andy Maxson. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Um, Josh gave me one major job today. And he said, you better improve on last week's weather. So with the help of Dave Barton and his secretary, Elaine, thank you both, because that was their challenge. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming. And what I'd like to do is to publicly thank our town supervisor, Paul Hansett. Um, we've accomplished a milestone last night. The town passed a resolution accepting the final scope of our DGIS, which has uh, been three plus years in the making. So give me a moment to introduce Paul to say a few words. Good morning. I thought you were going to do me last, but that's OK. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you, team. Um, I don't know if everybody understands what a huge impact this project is going to have, not only on the town of Lloyd, but the county of Ulster, uh, state of New York. Uh, when you look through the uh, program that was given to you and the numbers that are there, $270 million uh, project. We're talking somewhere about $2 million in town revenue, uh, $3.5 million, uh, 3.6 in school revenue. Uh, we're talking jobs. We're talking tourism. We're talking a huge impact to our community economic development wise. We have the walkway here, um, which brings a million, million people a year. Uh, now we're going to have this project, which is going to put us on the map. Uh, this project has been vetted. I mean, we have looked at this project. The job that uh, Andy and his team has put together um, in answering the concerns and comments that we've had in the past from the public, um, from an environmental standpoint, um, if you look in your, your packet, you're going to see that I believe 50 or 60 percent of the site is going to remain open. Um, the concerns of uh, the non-for-profits that have come forward, um, Scenic Hudson being one of them, with their concerns about the environmental, I think they've gone above and beyond addressing those concerns. The bluff is going to remain beautiful. Uh, there's going to be open space. And, you know, it's amazing to me seeing a project. I only uh, became part of this two years ago. But to see the acceptance and um, way that they have adjusted their site plan, I don't know how many different maps and sites and moving things here, moving things there. It's just phenomenal that, the, the, uh, that these guys, the effort that they put into this project. Um, it's, a, it's a piece of property that's been owned in a family. Uh, one of the family members is here with us today, 40 or 50 years. Um, this is a family-owned piece of property. And they want to do, it's not somebody coming in, putting a project together and running away. This is a commitment that they've made as a family, um, bringing this team together to bring this project to our community. And this is huge. And we're going to move on it. 
Um, March 19th, there'll be another public comment session um, at 7 o'clock at the town hall. We encourage the public uh, to come to that. We encourage the positive people to come to that, the people that want to see this project flourish and make our community what it can be. So I encourage everyone to, uh, to make that meeting March 19th. Bring your comments, bring your concerns. I look so much forward to cutting some ribbon along with Ward Todd uh, from the chamber somewhere in the very near future. So I commend you guys on the work that you have done. We thank you, and we look forward to moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. I guess we're all done. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, I, again, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. And for me, it's been an unbelievable opportunity to work with a town board that has been so supportive and persevered. Special thanks to, to some of the members, uh, Jeff Palladino, um, Herbie Litz, who is now a state legislature, but more for the sitting people that are still there. Uh, Kevin Brenny, Mike Guerrero, and a newcomer coming back, Mike Horodowski. It's just been wonderful. Uh, Litz is now District 9 at the Ulster County. Mary Beth Mayo, who is District 10, has lent her support from day one. And a special thanks to Suzanne Holt, who has been our conduit to Mike Hine and the county officers who have encouraged us and pushed us every step of the way. Um, it, it's, been, it's been absolutely unbelievable, so thank you all. Um, Supervisor Hansen talked about the Feinberg family. Almost 40 years ago, uh, the Feinbergs purchased, Herb Feinberg purchased this property from the Bolignacy's. The Bolignacy's brought, I guess, every piece of stone that made up what we now are going to call the Tuscan Village, which is a home, a tasting room, and other buildings that we hope to create with my architect, Steve Tinkelman, do an adaptive reuse and create a Tuscan Village in that area. Um, it satis purchasing the winery satisfied a long-term desire and goal of Mr. Feinberg, who had always been in the wine business. Uh, in the early years, it provided jobs. It was an active winery. It not only provided the jobs, it brought tourism. They had a manor house that hosted tour buses. And the property, I am reminded, held concerts during the summer. and. Um, as small as world it is, our council today parked cars. Yeah, ran, ran well. And um, it was renowned for its uh, wine tasting room. It was uh, Regent Champagne, and it was, it was just a very, very important key to the Hudson Valley. In early 2010, Mr. Feinberg asked me to figure out what to do with this property. I had the wonderful privilege of assembling a team of dedicated professionals uh, from Steve Tinkelman, our architect, Ken Stenger Council, uh, Stuart Messenger of the Chazen Group formed the inner circle of this, but Steve will talk to you about the other professionals and the number of them that we employed in order to determine the highest and best use as long as we were respectful of the environment and the Hudson River Bluff. That was the challenge, and as Paul said, we've been through nine iterations to get us where we are today. Um, we, are in a, we have been, since 2010, in a period of a very depressed real estate market. Um, how could we be successful? That was the challenge. So the initial way was to create a partnership, a partnership that has flourished with the town and the county. And our professionals addressed all sensitivities, as you will hear. We consolidated our thoughts and determined what the economic impact of a project of this size would bring, not only to the town, but to the community, to the county, and to the region. We created a theme, which I can thank Ken Stenger for. It's a three-legged stool. 
you need support. So in order to support a project of this size, you had to create tax radicals. Tax radicals in the form of new construction, new development. What would that bring? That would bring the second leg. It would create jobs. The jobs would be created at such areas as the light industrial segment, a hotel and conference center with all of its amenities, spa, restaurant, um, some museums to, to, to hold and to house a lot of the history of the winemaking at, at the site, as well as some of the archaeological find that you know, we found along the Hudson Bluff. We'll also have a significant amount of retail as well as office. And we're going to take half, you know, Steve will talk about the components of it. That then will create the third leg of the project. The jobs and the radicals will create, hopefully, the demand for housing. So our commitment is, as soon as the project is, is approved, to commence getting this shovel ready, provide the infrastructure, and be ready to go. Uh, first phase, hopefully, will be a combination of the conference center and the light industrial to create the tax radicals and bring the jobs. And we have had a number of conversations with uh, private people who have, and, and public corporations that have expressed an interest and are waiting for us to achieve our approval so that we can go forward. At this point, I'd like to turn um, the program over to our architect, Steve Tinkleman, of Tinkleman Brothers in Poughkeepsie. He is not only an architect and our architect, but has become a very good friend throughout this process. Thanks, Steve. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a privilege to be here, um, as it's been a privilege to work on this project. It's not that often that you get 429 acres plus to to work with, and, uh, and and 429 acres that are remarkable in so many different ways. You know, one that there's a mile and a half of frontage on the Hudson River, and there's a couple of power spots on the property that uh, offer remarkable views south, you know, down the Hudson Valley on the Hudson River and, and such. It's, uh, it's a remarkable uh, piece of property. You can, maybe you've seen it in, uh, in, uh, from Poughkeepsie. If you're at uh, the Grand View or Shadows and you look directly across the river, you can see this beautiful bluff that's undeveloped. There's, there's one manor house that was part of the winery that Andy was talking about before, but it's really a museum piece. I mean, it is a pristine mile and a half of frontage that is, is, is really a, a spectacular um, you know, uh, uh, component of, of, of this, this parcel. We started, as Andy said, in 2010, and you know, the first thing that you need to do as a designer um, um, is to really get to know the property. And the, the complexity of getting to know a property, given all the requirements um, that you have to undertake in the development, um, deals with, with the things that you ultimately have to address in the environmental impact process. So beyond just walking the property and getting to know it and getting to know the, the existing structures, there's a, there's a few very special pieces of, uh, of, of architecture on the property that are ripe for an adaptive reuse. Um, there's a, a, a little Tuscan village, that's the term we call it, um, because of the, uh, it has a kind of an Italianate feel to it. It, um, it, it uh, was the heart of the uh, winery operation when it, when it was uh, in its heyday. Um, but the property itself, um, you know, has all the things that you would expect to find um, in, in 429 acres from some wetlands and vernal pools. There's, you know, a complexity of, of uh, wildlife on the property, you know, the rocky, so, you know, rocky soils and, and topography that are, is complex. It was more of an open parcel at one point in time when it was an operating winery. It has grown in over the last 40 years from it, it just being fallow. Um, so the team puts, puts together um, 
a, a, a sheet of consultants that need to, you know, to uh, be actively involved in the process, from biologists to um, civil engineers to, uh, you know, we had to do uh, visual impact studies. We hired traffic engineers. I can give you a long list of such. It's all in, in the documents that we've submitted, but part of it was really to not just follow the functional requirements, but to really learn what we have um, to work with. Um, the other beautiful part was that there were no um, directions from the owner when we got started. Uh, the charge was really let the land talk to us, let's figure out how we can make a project really work here. Um, obviously, when you spend any time on the site, you begin to realize how remarkable the bluff is. And that was the first given that we came to, which was let's try to keep this as a museum piece for the county. Regardless of what other people have done with waterfront uh, development in, you know, in, the, uh, in the Hudson Valley here, let's, let's leave this you know, for generations to come. And I, I think that was the first given that we um, arrived at that there was really no controversy over. Um, when we started the project, um, you began to understand how large the, the property is. And, and the, in that regard, the other part of the complexity is what are you doing here that can really happen given the, given the economy? And how do you work over a 20 and 30 year period? Um, the site fit perfectly a development of 1,400 units when we first started. It's a lot of dwelling units that you obviously the marketplace couldn't absorb very quickly at this point in time. But then you start trying to figure out, well, what does 1,400 dwelling units mean? What else can we do to make this project um, successful? You're looking at things around the country that are also successful that may teach us lessons about what to do here. So the end result was to do a mixed-use project. The, the logic, as Andy talked about, the, the reference three-legged stool allows you to have different pieces that feed off of each other, and just so it happens that the land itself is appropriate for that kind of development. So where we are today, version number nine, which is our preferred development, is one that includes a hotel and conference center. Um, the, in some of the conversations we've had with potential users, um, we've looked at doing single loaded corridors for these 103 units that if you rent a room for the evening, come to stay, you have a fantastic view over the Hudson River. I mean, you know, how, how fantastic would that be? But uh, so part of it was to take this Tuscan village, also do an adaptive reuse to it, and we've looked at such ideas as um, a tourist center for agriculture in the area to promote products that are grown and, and, uh, and nurtured here from, you know, spirits and wines and beers and foods and all that. I mean, there's, there's a whole on, ongoing development of, of, of this in the Hudson Valley, and it's really maybe the heart of what part of the future growth is of, of our community. Um, the Tuscan Village would be you know, dynamically perfect for this kind of development. The other part of it is that there, if, if you're then um, looking at different, um, um, you know, components here, we developed a horseshoe road that uh, maybe we can get the, we developed a horseshoe road which um, is essentially this in here. And from that, we have, um, uh, you know, built, um, um, different clusters of development because again you're trying to allow this this is again a master plan so that you want to let it evolve as the world evolves so off this main road which would be built um, some of the imagery of it is a boulevard so that it is green it's left we're trying to leave as much as uh, as possible of some of the you know the natural fauna and topography and trees and all that sort of stuff and and the idea is also to create um, pedestrian interconnectivity amongst the different clusters. So within the concept, there are walking paths, bike paths between each of the clusters so that you can get from here to the bluff, you know, to the hotel, to the, uh, to the Tuscan village, so that there is a real inner um, activity um, that, that's being developed. Um, the land to the south, um, where we're showing about 450,000 square feet of potential light industrial space is appropriate for it. The other amazing part about what we've done here is that by giving the bluff 
back to the community and not developing it, you, you essentially do, do not see very much of what we're doing at all. And our visual impact studies have shown that. The other thing is that driving down Route 9, even though we're talking about allow for uh, different types of projects to evolve here. Um, so the, the, current, uh, the current project then is this hotel, conference center, spa, restaurant of about 103 units. There's about 150,000 square feet of a combination of office retail, possibly this, this uh, tourism center that I described earlier. 50,000 of that 150 is adaptive reuse of existing winery buildings. We're looking at about 104 or 840 different housing units in the different clusters that uh, are scattered about the property, and again, the 450,000 square feet of light industrial. The other important part about this is that infrastructure comes with the development of this project. And one of the concerns that you hear over and over in the Hudson Valley is the lack of shovel-ready projects that you know, have water, sewer, gas, electric that are zoned um, environmentally ready to go and all that. And that's the goal here is that at the end of the exercise, um, we have standards that have to be followed. There's processes with the town of Lloyd from zoning and planning and all that. But the projects are ready to go. Um, the, um, the, the other part of it is, is also the feel of the place. The, the property is very beautiful, and the property can be developed in a really uh, light-handed way to, to maintain the feel of its woodedness of it. And that's the, kind of the idea of these clusters so that, you know, you're not really denuding the property and leveling it and all that, but you're kind of working with the, the f ebbs and flows of the land and the environment there. Um, and again, you know, as Andy had mentioned earlier, an, an awful lot of sensitivity went into the analysis here. Even to this point, we've been monitoring um, the biodiversity on the property for the last three years. Every quarter we're going out, seeing if there's something new to learn, if there's been changes, et cetera, et cetera. So um, there's been a lot of effort, and again, this is probably more information than you want today, but, but there's been a lot of work that's been put in to really have a light hand on this and to allow it to happen. The last thing that I want to say is a kind of a personal one, and, and you know, I've been given a gift to work on this, pro this property, but I also want to thank my client, um, um, the Feinberg family. What, what, they, what they have done here is taken a development that's very complicated <coughs> and heavy front end wise from an economic perspective, and they're making this happen. It's so rare. In, particularly in a down economy where someone takes an aggressive position and says, hey, we can create something that will be a, a really beautiful project that'll bring new people to the community, that'll bring jobs, it, you know, it'll be a destination for things to do, and, and particularly to get out if you want to be outside and walk the bluffs. I didn't mention that, that we're planning on having pathways along the bluffs so that you can enjoy the mile and a half of frontage on the river. And, and I, I recommend when the opportunity comes to walk it. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing to hit Blue Point and see that view down, down the river. But what, what, what the Feinberg family covenant here is, let's make this project something that we can all be proud of. And, and, and uh, let's have it ready so it can respond to the economy and it can be a real value added to not only the town of Lloyd, but to the, the Hudson Valley, you know, in, in total. So I, I, I really want to thank the Feinberg family for giving me the opportunity to work on it. I think that this is a project that, you know, will do all the things that we've talked about and we just have to hope that the economy in general is also kind to the Hudson Valley. Um, some of the economic data, um, Andy, do you want to yeah. talk about that? Um, oh, Ken, you want to do something? What, what, I, what Ken will run you through, and you have all of the statistics with you in your packet. Uh, with the guidance of the town, we hired Camoyan <coughs> Associates to provide an economic impact study for us. Uh, in the DGIS application, you will, there are two formats. Number one, from our original scoping document of 2011, to the preferred alternative that appears to be the one that the town board, the county, and the developer, we have, have really would like to follow. So to run you through it, Ken Stenger, these are, these are within the Camoyne report, which is available online, the entire report, which is about 
almost 400 pages detailing the analysis of the financial impact uh, on the county, on the community, on the town, and on the school district. Yeah, uh, my name's Ken Stenger, and I, I am, along with Stephen, my colleague Jim Horan, privileged to have worked on this project for the last two years. Um, I want to emphasize something that Andy just said. The DGEIS is available online. You're going to see a series of numbers here in a few moments. Um, they are, we've pulled those numbers out of that report. You can go online. The Camoyne is part of that. I, I urge anyone who wants to verify these numbers to do so by looking at that report directly <coughs> online. But I wanted to talk, you know, the, I'm the lawyer. I'm not the planner. I'm the guy that kind of sums up the pieces. And, and, and here's the story on this project. It's a three-legged stool. It doesn't stand without one of the legs. And it, and it works really simply. It's self-sustaining. That's the fun part for me of this project. Because the first thing that this project will do when built out, when built out, it's a 20-year build-out plan here. That's a very important number. No one's proposing that all this housing is going to get dumped into the town of Lloyd next, next week. It's a 20-year build-out. What happens here is you build out the commercial pieces first. That's going to drive rateables for this town. It's going to provide a tax base for this town that it does not previously have. Those commercial pieces are going to create jobs. They're going to bring folks into town. They're going to create jobs for people who are already in town. That, in turn, is going to drive the need for housing, which is first going to re result in the absorption of all the existing housing stock. Folks who get up and say, this is going to drive the value down of houses that are already on sale because there'll be all that competition, I think that's wrong. I think what you'll see first is that the people who come to work in these jobs will be looking for housing that already exists, <coughs> and they will, they will tighten up that market and, in fact, drive the value of that housing up. But it's, it's, it's the third piece that works because, as, as, as Steve was talking about, bringing that infrastructure down is a huge undertaking, and it has benefits beyond this project. It has benefits for, for Marlboro. It has benefits for the town of Lloyd. Um, and again, I, I direct you to the DGIS to, to, to look at those. But the third piece is the housing. And the housing doesn't get built until there's a demand for it. Why would it? Why would it? But over time, with the numbers that we've seen, we believe that this project, once built out, the commercial pieces, will generate the rateables and the jobs that will create a demand that will, will first be met by existing housing stock in the town of Lloyd, and then ultimately be met by the build out here. So I want to go through some specific numbers. Uh, I don't have the little, okay. So we have a 20 year build out, new construction jobs, 164. Is, now these are not my numbers. They're the, from the Camoyne report. This is what Camoyne does. Again, I urge you to go online to look at those numbers directly. When this thing is fully built out, we are expecting that the jobs will create, during the phase of the build out, will bring $7.6 million into the town of Lloyd economy. When we have direct spending for construction is going to generate $13.5 million in annual spending. And that's not all going to be in the town of Lloyd, but it's going to be dollars that come through the town of Lloyd. When the project is completely built out, according to the Camoyne report, you're going to have a total, now this is a 20-year build-out, a total of 1,800 new jobs, which is projected to generate over $79 million annually in new salaries, earnings, monies that will be spent in the town of Lloyd, the county of Ulster, and its surrounding environs. When we do that, when we create those jobs by creating the rateables, we create in the town of Lloyd an, 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 an increase in revenues of $610,000 annually, and that the um, town will receive an additional $35,000 annually in sales tax distribution. Of course, that assumes that the rules of distribution will remain the same over the build-out. The school, in the end, after the full build-out, the Camoyne report 
is projecting that the town will receive $1.9 million more in tax revenue from this project than it presently receives from the entire town. The Camoyan report projects that the school district will receive an additional $3.67 million as its portion of these radicals once this project is completely built out. And that's really the story of this project. This is the other part of that project. I don't, they're compatible with each other. Steve has spoken to you of the beauty of the land. I'm speaking to you of growing a community. And in this instance, this project has embraced both values and brought them together in a very unique and creative way that venerates the values of those who clearly understand that, that, that the land is ours to, to, to protect, it is our heritage, but that we must all continue to grow. And so in the end, that's what we have. We have a project that will create rateables. Those rateables will create jobs. Those jobs will create a demand for housing. But the three of them working together do a fourth thing. They make it possible to protect that river viewshed. It makes it possible to protect the integrity of that land the way this thing has been designed. And most critically, I think, having done this for most of my adult life, the critical factor here is that this is a family project. This is not a developer who's just arrived in town and is dependent on financing. This is a family project. They own the land. They're going to stay the course. They're going to see this to the other end. And because of that dedication from the Feinberg family, we're able to bring this project as a fully integrated project that addresses growth. At the same time, it protects our heritage. So thank you. If there's any questions, I'll refer you to uh, Josh. And uh, one other speaker, I want to introduce Larry Gottlieb again, President and CEO of Hudson Valley Economic Development Board. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, as a, <clears throat> excuse me, as, as an economic development person, you know, economic developers always like to be in obstetrics versus being a mortician. So we much prefer birthing babies like projects like we're here for today uh, versus committing to post-mortems on what could have been if the elements had been together correctly. And this is, an exciting, this is an exciting project, and this is what economic development is all about. Is As the Hudson Valley's leading economic development organization, um, we're always seeking out great projects. We want to see great transformational projects occur, and that's what you're seeing here, something that will transform an area, something that will transform a region and will have a positive ripple effect beyond just the epicenter of where we are today. <coughs> um, the reality is for economic development, you know, it's not so much about the specifics of the project as it is about the people. And what you have uh, behind me is just an incredible team of dedicated individuals. And, and I always say that's what you really need is an army of the willing to see these projects through. And that's what you have behind me. And I'm so glad that I've got several board members from, from my organization, HVEDC, here, here today. Uh, Suzanne Holt, is, as was mentioned, from, from Ulster County. Um, John Rath, I saw, walked in from, from TD Bank. And Josh Summers from Focus Media is on my board. And, you know, not only them, but the team that has, has been assembled that you've just heard present the specifics on this project, they are the army of the willing. They're the ones that are seeing this project through and have been working dedicated to it uh, for, for many, many years. When we talk about the need for committed individuals, you need individuals that are willing to strike the right balance between uh, environmental and economic sustainability. And what you heard out of that presentation was a real commitment to striking the right balance between those, two, between those two great needs. It is the right marketplace balance, and that's a direct reflection, again, of the team and the benefits of this project we will see for many years to come. I mean, how often do you sit in a room and somebody talks about that this is a benefit that's going to keep on giving over the course of 20 years? It's, it's just great. So uh, on behalf of Hudson Valley Economic Development Corporation, uh, I want to thank everybody here for coming out today. I want to thank all of the members of this team behind me for their commitment uh, to 
sustainable building to sustainable development. We are certainly behind that, and we look forward to, uh, to seeing this project progress, and I wish them all uh, well, and congratulations. Thank you.